welcome to this room this is my study time i pray that you are having a blessed day thus far and if not trust me it will get better so i pray that you are having a blessed morning blessed blessed morning i said it twice for you today anyway we're gonna go ahead and step into this series i pray um that this series help you um i pray that it enlightens you um and that's all we're gonna go ahead and like i said we're gonna go ahead and jump into it we're not gonna keep it long this morning um i wanted you to just see my face and i pray that you are blessed um, there are so many things that's coming and so once again i just i want to share it with you and don't be don't be disturbed by what you may see on the news what you may hear on the news um I want to say some things, but I, I can't right now. But make sure you stay on your knees in prayer. Fast and listen to the correct prophets. Listen to the prophets that are telling you things. I try to I try to share a lot of things. I, I don't know where you're watching me at. You know, if you're watching me on Facebook, of course, you pretty much get everything that I share. Um, if you watch me on Instagram, you get everything I share. If you're watching me on YouTube, I can share but so much on YouTube. Um, that's why I ask people to go ahead and subscribe to the other pages because I can't share but so much on there. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you for joining us for another power packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. So I want to talk about the key principles of business and wealth from the kingdom perspective. Let me begin with a few comments about wealth. When people talk about wealth, they normally think about money. I don't. I want to give you seven spheres of wealth that you must focus on. You must be wealthy in seven areas or you will be poor. The first area of wealth is spiritual wealth. The Bible calls this being rich toward God. If your spiritual life is not in order and you have a billion dollars in the bank you are poor what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose the most important thing he has his soul so you want to focus on wealth in your spirit life the second sphere of wealth in the kingdom is solical wealth. Solical wealth means intellectual and emotional development. <clears throat> you must focus on developing yourself intellectually. God gave you a brain. He expects it to be developed. God gave you a brain with nothing in it. <laughs> it's like a hard drive on a computer. It is up to you to decide what you download. It's called learning. It's important for you to become very wealthy in your soul. Your soul consists of your mind your will and your emotions. It is not to your benefit to have a billion dollars in the bank but don't have the intelligence to invest it. Don't have the knowledge to multiply it. And don't have the wisdom to invest it. And that's why Solomon was smart. 
When God asks them, what do you want? I will give you anything you want. Solomon did not ask for money. He asked God for solical wealth. He said, give me knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Later on, Solomon wrote this in his book called Proverbs. He said, Wisdom brings wealth. One of the students of Jesus, his name was John, wrote a little book that is tucked away in your Bible. It's 3rd John. He said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That means your health depends on your mental state. Your prosperity depends on your solical development. I always tell people when I train them in business that wealth is actually an idea. It's not money. Wealth has to be first in the mind. So you must be wealthy in your soul. The third set of wealth that you must focus on in the kingdom of God is what we call physical wealth. You know, it's interesting that Stephen Jobs, one of the richest men in the history of the world, who founded Apple Computer with a partner, he was worth hundreds of billions of dollars, but not one dollar could save him from cancer in his pancreas and his liver. He died with a billion dollars in the bank. He had, <laughs> he had material wealth, but he didn't have physical wealth. No matter how much you know, no matter how much you are talented and gifted, if your body breaks down, you are poor. This is why John said, I wish above all things that you may what? Prosper and be in health. Nothing is worse than laying on your back with some big ideas. You must become wealthy in your physical body. That means when you leave this place, you must make a decision to focus on becoming wealthy, healthy. You may wonder why God, when he created the nation of Israel, he gave them all kinds of wonderful laws. But then he focused on suddenly physical laws of their bodies. And he gave them an hygiene list. He gave them a health program. He gave them even specific foods to eat and would not to eat. He was focusing on the third area of wealth, your body. By God's grace, my wife and I and my children have not been sick for 36 years. Not one disease in our house. Now, uh, of course, I live under the kingdom culture, but we also eat properly. We exercise. We drink good water. And we feed our minds good books. 
and listen to good CDs and DVDs. All that is a part of my health. We even protect ourselves from negative company. Because that can affect your health. If you stay around people who complain all the time, finding fault all the time, always criticizing, you are in a diseased environment. You must prosper in your area of physical wealth. The fourth sphere of wealth is social wealth. We don't think about this sometimes. But... <laughs> It's important for you to become wealthy in your friendships. Wealthy in your family relationship. Wealthy in your relationships with people in your environment. I can't stress how important this is. You are as poor as the friends you have. You are as wealthy as the friends you keep. If your marriage relationship is not working, you are sick. It's called social disease. If your relationship with your parents is negative, and there's stress between you and your mother and your father, unforgiveness and anger, you are poor in your social wealth. This is why Jesus stressed, forgive those who offend you. Do good to those who despitefully use you. Pray for those who persecute you. Why? Keep the relationships pure for your own wealth. And then he says, do good to everyone. Do you know that your success may depend on someone who you don't like. Sometime you go to a bank to borrow money for your company and the person who's in charge of the department is someone who you offended. And now they hold your life in their hands. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be nice to me. You might need me next week. Be wealthy in your relationships. Most of the time, you don't need money. You need people with money. <laughs> Jesus was smart. He kept people around him who had access to resources. Some of you wonder why Jesus kept Mary around him. You know, the lady from Magdalene, the little village. The lady was loaded. <laughs> she came and put money on his body. And based on the calculation of today's currency, it was between 15 and 18,000 US dollars. She had it in her pocket, in her pocket. He said, lady, I'm going to heal you and stay with me. <laughs> See, sometimes your problem is all your friends are poor. If you are poor and I'm poor, we are bad company. <laughs> Clap right there, somebody. Welcome to the prayer for forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Heavenly Father together. Please continue to meditate on this prayer for yourself. Speak it daily or listen to this video over and over again. And allow the Word of God concerning forgiveness, renewal, and repentance of sins to reach deep into your spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together here online and come into agreement in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Where two or more are gathered, there you shall surely be. And anything we agree upon as touching you will surely do. The Bible says that if there's any unforgiveness, that it should be dealt with before praying. Therefore, we release any anger, bad feelings, resentment, or any other wrong attitude before you now. We lay it at your feet and we release and forgive those who have wronged us. I lift up those watching this video and we come into agreement and lift up forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. 
Father, your word says that if we ask for mercy and for forgiveness, you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purely on the basis of the promises of forgiveness in your word, with all feeling aside, we believe that the listener is forgiven. Humbly they come before your throne to receive this grace and mercy. Help the listener to forgive themselves and let the past go. We declare in agreement that Jesus is Lord over the listener, and if they believe in their heart that you raise him from the dead, they will be saved with heaven being their eternal home. We receive it and we praise you, Father. Help the listener's unbelief. Their slate is wiped clean right now. In the face of any feeling of guilt and unworthiness, the listener receives their forgiveness from you. The guilt is for leaving and the sin is removed because of your love for them. You have forgiven their sins completely. They are blessed. God in heaven, you have forgiven them because of what Jesus has done. It is not about what they do or don't do. It is by grace through faith that they have forgiveness. They cannot earn it, but you have freely given forgiveness to them because they asked. Praise the Lord. Renew them right now by your spirit in Jesus' name. We speak refreshing over their mind, will, emotions, and body right now in Jesus' name. You, Father, are holding nothing against them. You, Father, are not holding anything back from them. You chose the listener in Christ before the foundation of the world that they should be holy and blameless in your sight. Thanks be to you. In Jesus, they have redemption, deliverance, and salvation through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of their offenses, shortcomings, and trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of your gracious favor. Father, the listener has received your son, Jesus. They believe in his name. Through Jesus, you have given them the right to become your child. Thank you for forgiving them entirely and absolving them from all guilt. They are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus. They are set free from the past in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Prayer for Salvation. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. By His grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of His Word instantly comes to pass in your spirit, and when you are born again, there is a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus.